A lot of people get into engineering for the money, but what if I told you that becoming an engineer also makes you a better person? Well, I'm sure actually a lot of you would still just care about the money, which makes sense. Yeah. Stuff costs a lot. You ever fill gas? It's a fiscally painful procedure. But money aside, engineering does make you a better person, and I have proof. So in this video, I will present my case and explain the three ways being an engineer has made me a better person. Number one, it has taught me that you just gotta start the project. And you don't need to know what you're doing to start, but it is very important that you do indeed start. Also, you don't need an extensive plan to start. Just get started and everything will start to become clear. I'm not saying don't have a plan. Eventually, kind of form a plan, but you don't need a fully fleshed out plan to get started. In fact, getting started will probably help you make your plan, because only once you start the process will you understand what the next steps will be. So just start the project. And I know this is some of the easiest advice to give, but the hardest to take, because I struggle with this myself. I would say the thing I struggle with the most is starting and also texting back in a timely manner. But it makes sense that starting something would be intimidating. It's the only point in the process where you have done literally nothing. Yeah, if you think about it, the only thing you have in front of you is just, oh, I don't know, the entire task. So you can choose to be bogged down by the idea that you haven't accomplished anything yet, or you can realize that literally any small amount of progress will be an improvement on what you had before. You know, at work, there's all these big projects with due dates that are like months out sometimes, and it's so scary to get started because you think you have to make so much progress immediately, but no, you just need to start. You just need to make a little bit of progress. And I found that this translates to my personal life too. Let's say it's your friend's birthday. You don't have to spend all this time and money and think of the perfect gift. You just have to get them a little something that shows them that you were thinking of them. Also, don't come in too hot with too good of a gift. Every year you're gonna be like, ah, oh, I have to beat what I did last year. But you're gonna quickly find that that's impossible. Yeah, gift giving does not follow Moore's law, okay? You can't keep doubling every year. You understand that, right? Yeah, you're gonna have to contain yourself on the whole gift giving thing, okay? You don't wanna burn yourself out. Which is actually, I guess, perfect to my point. You don't have to spend all this time and money on getting the gift. Just get them a little something. I mean, make it good. Yeah, do make, it should be good still. But it doesn't have to be crazy, is what I'm saying. Because that little gift is better than getting them nothing at all. You see, I think we get a little paralyzed by the possibility of failure that sometimes we don't even give ourselves the chance to succeed. I read this book recently called The Consistency Formula by Susie Sung, and it has this dope quote from it. It says, doing just 1% of something is better than doing 20% of nothing. Which is a great thing to think about on those days when you can't find the strength to do anything. You just need to remind yourself that you have to do literally the smallest amount, but do it every day. And this takes me back to, I think it's the season two finale of BoJack Horseman, when he like falls down on the ground. And then you know that guy that's always running outside his house? He comes up to him and says, It gets easier. Huh? Every day it gets a little easier. Yeah? But you gotta do it every day. That's the hard part. But it does get easier. Number two, I've learned that you should share the things you're working on. Nothing confidential, of course, though, you know? But when you share what you're working on, that will inspire others and allow you to get feedback or input from them. But you gotta be careful with this one, because sometimes I find that if you do share what you're working on, some of the motivation goes away. The whole, like, toiling away on your own thing can be very motivating, because then you know I am truly doing this for myself. So I'll put a little asterisk on that one. Maybe don't share everything, but share a lot of things because people will see what you're doing and get hype, which in turn can hype you up too. Call that the law of thermal hypnamics. <coughs> That's okay. I don't know who's worse, me for making that joke or you because you stuck around watching one of my videos for this long. Also, when people see that you're doing stuff, it will show them that you have value and they'll want to keep you around. Now that sounds terrible, right? In a personal context, but if you think about work, that actually doesn't sound that bad. Isn't that weird? Yeah, when it comes to work, it's not weird to say, yeah, you gotta show what you're working on because then people will know you have value and they'll keep you around. But if you said that to someone about their real life, ooh, that's, ooh, don't say that. That'd be weird, man. <laughs> and of course, this is not to say that if you aren't productive, no one will like you. Remember, even if you're in a rut, you're still worthy of love. Even if that means you're not doing jack shit. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know when you show your capabilities at work, you're building job security because you're showing your employer that you're valuable. Like if they were to get rid of you, show them what they would be losing. Of course, in any relationship though, professional or personal, 
there is only so much you can do. Like you could be the most capable employee or the most perfect partner in a relationship and the other person could still decide that it'd be best if you were to go separate ways. <laughs> and this isn't a reflection on you. It just means the relationship wasn't meant to be. So learn what you can from that split, but don't take it too personally and let it derail you from achieving the future success that you deserve. In real life, sharing experiences with others makes them so much better. Not to say you can't have fun solo, it's just when you do involve other people, it can make things that much better. And actually, personally, I would say sharing time is a big thing for me. You know, quality time is my number one love language, which actually my number one love language is just, you know, a willingness to talk to me. But after that, you know, quality time is big for me. And also, you know, when you're talking about the things that you do, other people will suddenly start realizing that, oh, that's something that you do? Wow, I didn't know that. And then opportunities can come out of thin air. People can be like, wait, you make videos? Oh my God, wait, um, hey, can you edit this video for a friend of mine for like $100? And you'll be like, oh my God. No, I don't want to do that, but thank you for the consideration. That's so awesome that I have that opportunity. No, I'm just kidding. I would do it for $200. <laughs> $100, what are you talking about with that? And number three, being an engineer has taught me to look around myself, basically being conscious, socially and emotionally. As an engineer, you have to look around and see what are other people making? Because based on that, you can think about, okay, so how can I improve myself? Are they doing it in a way that I can learn from and become better? Also, they are doing that. What led them to do that? Motive is so important to know. You know why people do stuff? This is helpful at work in order to make decisions, but this is also helpful in your personal life to make connections. A lot of the time, you know, we know the stuff people do, but very rarely do we know why they're doing it. It's like, you know, you know my name, <laughs> not my story. And usually there's a whole story there. You know, people are doing a thing, they probably wanna talk about why they're doing it. And knowing that story can give you more clarity into their decision and may even inspire you to make some decisions of your own. Also, as an engineer, we have to think about what does the world need? Engineers don't reinvent the wheel, we make new stuff. Well, technically, if you were to reinvent the wheel, that would make you an engineer. So, only an engineer could reinvent the wheel. But that's a metaphor. The wheel is figurative. There isn't a wheel. And thinking about what the world needs is important in your daily life, too. Whether it be what your family needs, what your community needs, what your province needs. What is a province? It's important to think about the value you can bring into other people's lives. Yeah, being an engineer has taught me to identify gaps and there are gaps in real life too. Like if your kid sucks at math, well, it's probably because both his parents suck at math too. So you gotta hire a tutor. Oh, your girlfriend's trying to get something off the top shelf? Maybe remember that you are six foot three and you should probably help her, but you're not always gonna be around, are you? Buy a stool, see? You gotta think about the gaps in real life. Also, engineers, we're always thinking about what is a problem we can solve. That one's kind of a one-for-one -one transferable skill, you know, the whole problem-solving thing. Like, do you guys know that game Overcooked? Play that with engineers. It is a very different experience. And I'm not gonna say if it's better or worse. It's different. And that's because the skills they've learned at work have transferred over to Overcooked. And I'm not going to say again, that's bad or good. It's just a thing. And the last thing I'll say on this point is that as an engineer, we work in groups and everyone in that group usually has their own role. And to know what role you can fill or create, you have to know what is already going on with that group. Like if someone is already working on something, figure out how you can add to their effort rather than just duplicate or copy their effort. Add value. Don't step on toes. And this can translate to real life too. You know, if you have roommates and there's dishes to do and your roommate does dishes every Wednesday, don't do dishes on Wednesday, okay? Take the trash out on Wednesday. Walk the dog on Wednesday. Don't do their thing on their day. That's their role. If your roommate is very good looking, be the funny one. Everyone has their role. Okay, just figure out what yours is. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram. And remember, if you want to be a better person, become an engineer. But if you want to make a lot of money, become a doctor. Yeah, that's why people do that, right? <laughs>